scientists have known of ice in the pools of Mars for years, but this week NASA confirmed the existence of flowing liquid salt water on the red planet. The moisture is still in trace amounts and often well below freezing, but its existence has huge ramifications for us humans. Could life be sustained on the red planet? Dr. Michio Kaku is here. He's a theoretical physicist, professor at the City College of New York, and certainly uh, the smartest person who has ever sat at the oval plexiglass table. Welcome back, doctor. Well, glad to be here. So let's talk about Mars. This is very exciting. What is, uh, what's the importance of flowing water, and why is that different from the frozen water? Well, NASA hit the jackpot this week. Uh, the holy grail of planetary research is to find flowing liquid water which can one day perhaps sustain life. To get life off the ground, what do you need? Three things. One, energy, like sunlight. Mm. Two, organic chemicals. Three, liquid water. Mars has two of the three, but Mars is frozen solid. Yeah. So how can life possibly exist? The key is in one word, antifreeze. You put antifreeze in your car sure. so that it remains liquid, even though everything else is freezing outside. That's why Mars has liquid water, because it has magnesium perchlorates, other chemicals which lower the freezing point of the liquid. Okay, so these perchlorates that, uh, that are in the water that allow it to still flow freely. That's right. Is there any way, I mean, you say that we could harness that for rocket fuel. Eventually, um, the, the hope is that there are aquifers, underground aquifers that feed these little trickles of water, uh, these riverbeds. Once we tap into the aquifers, we can get wells. Yeah. Once we have wells, we can refine it for drinking water and rocket fuel. You can separate out the oxygen and the hydrogen, because water is H2O after sure. all, for rocket fuel. And one day, maybe even irrigate crops. That, of course, is perhaps decades into the future. But the very fact that we can talk like this is amazing. The planet is frozen solid and yet has liquid water. So has this moved the prospect of a manned mission to Mars forward? Is it, is it closer than it was two weeks ago? Uh, no, we're still talking about perhaps the 2030s. Yeah. Uh, we're still testing the booster rocket. We're, we're testing the capsule. We're in the early stages, basically, of being able to send uh, a manned mission to Mars. That's not going to change. And how, Matt Damon's going to have to wait. He's going he's gonna to have to wait. But you know what? It's only, what, 15, 20 years uh, until we get right. there? That's right. All right. So uh, those booster rockets, um, I've seen some interesting stuff f from private space explorers. How important will they be? You know, because it, it doesn't seem like the government is going to alone be able to fund these manned missions. How important will private space exploration be to one day landing on Mars? Well, everyone says, including the president, uh, that we need a new Sputnik moment to energize the space program. Yeah. That's difficult because President Obama canceled Sputnik. He canceled the manned space program. Yeah. And he has left it to private industry to pick up the slack. So we don't have to thumb a ride on Russian booster rockets. So SpaceX, uh, led by Elon Musk, yes. is among the, the cutting edge of private enterprise getting involved in the space program. Yeah, and he has designed some really interesting looking rockets that, you know, I don't know the mechanisms that actually make them fly, but it's certainly different than anything we've seen on Earth. And that drives his space program. In fact, he wants to nuke Mars. You know that, right? <laughs> I, wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. We could do it. We could drop a hydrogen bomb. Well, what is, what does that do? Does that, does that change the climate and warm it up for That's us? That's the goal. Yeah. Uh, if we uh, nuke the ice caps, well, liquid water will flow on the surface of Mars again, speeding up the terraforming of Mars that is creating a Garden of Eden on the red planet. Mm. However, the fact that we have liquid salt water on Mars, I think, is a game changer. It means that perhaps we don't have to nuke Mars. Perhaps we just have to dill, drink, dill, uh, drill into the soil to get liquid water from wells. Yeah, and then we can dig into middle Mars and create our own colony and, uh, and little tiny Martian hobbits. Who knows? It's I mean, the imagination goes wild, right, thinking about this. Absolutely. I'm so glad uh, you're back. Please visit us again. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the heavens, physics, and beyond. Dr. Michio Kaku, thank you.